and then the police were helping and the fire department came and took care of him. So, I mean, there's, yeah, everyone um, was making sure that everyone else was okay. No one was getting overlooked or, or left out. Now, you referenced for a minute there uh, about the bridge, and for anyone who may be listening to this that's unaware of, of what that really was, there was a period yesterday where uh, where the traffic of all of you was heading in a certain direction. up on the Brooklyn Bridge and we now know that police were actually involved in um, whether it was subversive or it was uh, directly uh, directing you to the bridge the police were, were actually trying to get the crowd to go to the bridge so that they could trap you there and they ended up making uh, 700 arrests one of which was a 12 year old girl and you all four of you uh, Caleb Teagan Matthias and Don, who had gone together, you were all on that bridge. Uh, describe what you saw when all of a sudden the, the human traffic was was stopped, or was it quite that simple? Well, first, um, the 12-year-old girl that I think everyone is referring to, I saw a picture of her, and I actually, she was right behind me. Um, during the march, and I don't think that she was actually 12 years old. I think she was actually probably more like 18 or 19. Mm. She looks young in the photo because she's wearing um, like a kind of a childish hat. But uh, I saw her during the march, and if that's who they're referring to, I think she was a little bit a little bit older. But yeah, as you can you can take it for the okay. Uh, as far as the like. Um, we, <clears throat> the march was going successfully, we got to the bridge, Tegan and I were about in the middle of the crowd, halfway between the front and the back, and you could not see either the front or the back, even if you stood up on a light pole.
March! 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 As we got onto the bridge, March! there's a footpath and a road path and the road for cars. Um, by the time Tegan and I had gotten there, we had already been split up with Matthias and Don. They had gone ahead to videotape and such. Um, they ended up on the footpath. Tegan and I got to the split, and there were people saying, you know, go that way, go that way, or, you know, you can go that way. And we just kind of followed what looked like the majority of the crowd onto the bridge, onto the road portion of the bridge. Um, and the police stood there and let us go without a problem. And about halfway, about a quarter of the way through the bridge, Tegan and I took it upon ourselves to grab onto the railing of the footpath and hoist ourselves up so Tegan could snap some shots of the crowd. Um, <laughs> and you couldn't see the either mm-hmm. end. Again, we were in the middle. You could not see either end. Um, and then after a minute or two, we jumped down back into the crowd. And very shortly thereafter, I'd say no more than five minutes uh, thereafter, Tegan and I suddenly found ourselves at the back of the march, um, and there was a wall. There were there was a wall of police and paddy wagons and paddy wagons trailing us. Um, so the cops very obviously cut off the march, um, and we kept walking. People were starting to panic a little bit. Yeah, we really had nowhere to go. Yeah, people were just walking faster away from the police. People started and, climbing up the bridge to the pedestrian walk. And then we stopped <laughs> completely. Um, and everybody at the back was yelling march because nobody knew that there were police in front of us. And then, I don't know, 30 seconds after that, it became apparent that we were totally boned. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they they marched up unrolled a net, um, netted us all in, basically. Some people started sitting down on the bridge and yelling, sit down, sit down, which Caleb and I didn't do. Um, And then they started arresting people towards the back. Um, After that, uh, it they, they uh, kind of corralled some of us off to one side. Uh, they were still picking a couple people out of the crowd, and we started being funneled away from the bridge, back towards the city, back toward Manhattan. And Tegan and I were both under the impression that they were just kind of turning us around. Yeah, that they had let everyone go. We didn't find out until we got back to camp that that was not the case. That they, they had only let... I don't know how many people, I would say it would be no more than a hundred people that they had actually let off the bridge towards the back, and I'm under the impression from some things that I've read that they let the back people go because they weren't able to hear the police in the front who had warned them not to take the driving lanes across the bridge. So the people in the back were kind of just following the crowd and they didn't know that they weren't supposed to be there and that they would be arrested if they were there. So I think I'm under the impression that that's why they let us go. Yeah, that seems to make sense. Uh, The part that still doesn't quite make sense to me is if the police really were directing us onto the road just to trap us, why would they let any of us go? Um, And, uh, and, you know, I don't think it's beyond uh, the possibility that the protesters did just take it upon themselves, but I think that uh, there have been a lot of sources saying that's not the case. Or a few, a few police officers took it upon themselves to let people go. And right. Yeah. I mean, it might have just been a mis- miscommunication with the police. Either way, um, it was a very, very conscious effort to trap us on that bridge. Um, and. I'm very thankful that Caleb and I stopped to take pictures because we were towards the front of the the line and when we stopped to take pictures it pushed us more towards the back.